This is Joseph Stanton talking about the design of the compression train for the carbon capture and storage project for group CEE3. This is the process flow diagram of the whole plant. The compressor train needs to raise the pressure of the product CO2 gas to 50 bar pressure, keeping it at 25 degrees centigrade. I selected the after cooler as the main equipment. So initially I used the engineering science data unit to select the best type of heat exchanger. And the best one was the shell and tube heat exchanger for this application. The best configuration of heat exchanger was the YouTube heat exchanger. There is a large temperature difference between the gas and the cooling water. And this configuration is the cheapest way to allow thermal expansion of the tubes without damaging the heat exchanger they can expand into this space here. So Coulson and Richardson have a chart that is used for providing an initial estimate of the overall heat transfer um, coefficient. And that allows a rough sizing of heat exchanger. With those sizes provided, the other heat transfer coefficients, the internal and external, can be calculated based on that flow regime for that heat exchanger size. Um, and that provides the ability to create a much higher accuracy calculation of the overall heat transfer um, coefficient. And once that's calculated, the whole process can be reiterated because the more, the higher accuracy heat transfer, overall heat transfer coefficient U, can be used to resize the heat exchanger and recalculate the other heat transfer coefficients, which in turn allows a more accurate U, the overall heat transfer coefficient to be calculated. Once that converges, the pressure drop is calculated. Um, my pressure drop was much too high. And so I needed to change the design of the heat exchanger, which again changes the flow regime and that changes the overall heat transfer coefficient again. And it starts a new iterative process. I had the added complication that the compressor needs to compensate for any pressure drop in the cooler. So when the, when the compressor outlets at a higher pressure, it also outlets at a higher temperature and that increases the cooling duty, which itself means that the heat exchanger needs to be redesigned. So only once all of those factors converged, um, and I used an engineering tolerant, tolerance of about 2%, um, could the design be accepted. This is a drawing of the, of the heat exchanger you can see below here. And this is a close up in this yellow box. And you can see the tube pitch and the tube outer diameter, for example. I've labeled where the weld neck flanges, which are more expensive, but more suited to the higher pressure of the gas, which is at 50 bar, um, where that, those are used, those do, those are used on the tube side and to attach the tube header a tube side header to the rest of the shell. And the cheaper slip-on flanges can be used for the cooling water shell side fluid. In the equipment control, there were two objectives. One, the outlet pressure, as I said, needs to be at 50 bar. And so a pressure transducer is used to, to, to detect the pressure. Um, I used a strain gauge that sends a signal to a pressure controller, which controls the valve pneumatically of the inlet feed to the compressor, and that's used to control the outlet pressure in a, in a in continuous um, feedback loop of control, um, control, a feedback control regime. For temperature, there are actually two objectives. One, to control the outlet uh, temperature at 25 degrees centigrade, but also the temperature of the cooling water return was not allowed to exceed 40 degrees. So, two thermocouples fed into a multivariable controller and they were and the design uses that to control the inlet feed of cooling water to the heat exchanger this is just the pnid of the whole compressor train for the costing i used the engineering science data unit which uses a step counting method for heat exchangers it's based on 1993 prices in the uk so i had to assume that while once adjusted for inflation and the currency was translated, the prices would be similar. Um, for the compressors and the piping and instrumentation, that there were a different method was used. For the compressors, I just looked at different um, suppliers and the, and the prices that they provide on their websites. And piping and instrumentation, I used the Lang factorial method. This is just a breakdown of the costs. 
Um, for the piping instrumentation, about 47%. For three heat exchangers, about 48%. And for three compressors, it's only about 5% of the total cost of the compressor train. The compressor, the compressor train. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please let me know at this email address here.